Tonight's project is going to be doing a wet specimen preservation with three white-tailed deer fetuses. They were triplets, they were all within the same mother, and apparently from what the DNR officer has said, twins are quite common but triplets are a little bit more on the rare side. So it was very interesting to find these little ones in their mother, especially having three of them. One of them is a lot smaller than the other ones, so I'm not sure if she would have survived if they had all come to term, because there's always one of the triplets that is a lot smaller and they don't always make it in the wild because they are so smaller, because they all compete for nutrients. But it's very interesting to see that with these ones here, of how sm much smaller the little girl is than the two brothers. So I'm going to show you the deer in a few minutes. I'm just going to warn anybody who's a little squeamish about blood and guts and all that, that this is going to be graphic. It's not going to be dissecting them or anything, because I'm just putting them in jars. But there will likely be some blood, and they're fetuses, so they're not fully formed. They have no hair, their eyes aren't even open, they're just... <laughs> How else can I explain it other than these are underdeveloped deer fetuses. They look like deer. You can tell that they are white-tailed deer, but at that gestation you might not even be able to tell they're white-tailed deer. You just know that they're a little hoofed animal. So you can see here just how much smaller the little girl is from the boys, and this is not just the angle of the camera. She is a lot smaller. Just put her in a bit closer to him so you can you can see how much smaller she is than him. You can see how much smaller her skull is, how much smaller her body is. She was quite a bit underdeveloped. So she's going to have a much smaller jar than the boys. Um, this little fella here, he, his alcohol solution is definitely going to be discolored during this process because he has a stab wound here from when the officer was cutting him out of his mother's womb the knife went into his side so he's going to be seeping I'm just going to roll him over on that injured side to help drain some of that liquid out and I'll probably do him last that way as much blood is out of him as possible Now these guys have been in my freezer since the second week of April, and although I was a little worried they'd be freezer burnt, they're not. They they are pretty. They are in pretty good condition. I'm just looking at their little hoofs there. They're in really good shape, and I think that she's going to turn out really well in her in her jar. You can see her cute little face there. So I'm going to do her first. And what you need is you need to mix up a 70 to 75 percent alcohol solution. So I could only find one bottle of 70 percent alcohol. I could not find 75. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix 50 and 99. And that supposedly will give me the 75. The first thing that you want to do with the whip preservation is where these guys are kind of wet they should be dried off just a little bit you just want to take some blood and whatnot off of them this also minimizes the water content that's going to be put on them because I had these guys soaking in water to thaw them out and you don't want too much water in there because that dilutes your alcohol. So I'm going to use the 70% alcohol and I'm actually going to insert that into her mouth and the reason why I'm doing this is the insides have to be preserved as well as the outside and it does eventually seep into their insides but it's a lot better if you just put it in their insides from the start 
So just very, very gently into her mouth and squeeze that in. Note when you put it in there, you want to be very careful not to pull the stopper up or you will be sucking whatever is inside of her in there. And I'm just massaging her stomach right now because she probably is really underdeveloped and she'd never be able to use them, but she does have lungs. So I'm just compressing that. That will help that will help pull the alcohol into her lungs and into her stomach as well. Alright, I think that's about as much as her little belly's going to hold. This is starting to seep down now. It's a really cute little thing. Alright, so <clears throat> now that we have that inside of her, if you want to be really thorough, you could take and inject with a needle, but I don't want to because I don't want to risk puncturing too much. He's just bleeding from her umbilical cord right there. They cut it off too short. Now if you are doing this yourself and you are cutting these out of the mother, leave some umbilical cord on so you can tie it off. And that'll prevent leakages like this from occurring. So I'm hoping she fits in this jar. If not, I'll be putting one of the boys in water and searching for another container for the for him. Right, I don't want to flip her upside down because I don't want that liquid to come out of her belly. Second thought, I could have put her in the jar and then did this that way. Oh yeah, she's going to fit in here nice. I apologize if anything is off shot at any point. Alright, so the next part is positioning. And I really should have got my probe out. <laughs> Use one of my painting spatulas here. It'll take a few minutes to get her into the right position. She's coming closer now because I want her face to be more of the focus and not her legs up in a funny position. And if you are doing this, just be very careful if you're using a butter knife or anything. You do not want to cut them open.
I want that other leg up here. There we go. All right, and now, finally, she is in position. And I can start filling up with the alcohol. So I've got the empty jars here. I'm going to use those for mixing. So that is about half and half mix there. And pretty much all you do is pour it in. And she looks really, really nice. Alright, so baby number one is done.